Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And when the Mac Mini 2018 was announced at Apple's October event, I was just taken aback by it because it's been so long since we've seen an update to this computer. In fact, we haven't seen an update to the Mac Mini since 2014, and that update was very controversial. In that 2014 update, Apple did a couple of things that made the Mac Mini less attractive, like getting rid of the option for a quad-core processor, and other controversial things like soldering the RAM to the motherboard board, which meant that you couldn't upgrade it yourself. But Apple's back with a new Mac Mini for 2018, and yes, this is the reality we live in. And if you know what the 2014 Mac Mini looks like, you have a pretty good idea of what the 2018 Mac Mini looks like. The 2018 Mac Mini is the same exact design as the 2014 Mac Mini on the outside. The only big change to the design of this Mac Mini is that it now comes in a new color, and in fact, it's the only color. It comes in a space gray finish, and that space gray finish, and I hate to admit it because it's such a small change it does make the Mac mini look really nice now where Apple did make some changes to the Mac mini is in its port selection but don't be afraid the Mac mini still has a pretty robust selection of ports to choose from so you have your standard two USB a ports you also get four Thunderbolt 3 USB C type C ports these are super fast ports I've spoken about them tons on the channel but what I really like about them is that they can drive a 5k display with only a single cable and you can connect eGPUs to them as well, so if you ever wanna do any future sort of expansion, these ports are great. They're really fast and really capable I.O., and they use the USB-C type connector, so it's reversible, really easy to plug in, a great connector. It also comes with an HDMI port, which is really great because the Mac Mini doesn't come with a monitor, so if you have an old monitor laying around that uses HDMI, you can just connect it to that. And it's also great for connecting to a TV. A lot of Mac mini users use it as a home media server or hook it directly to their TV. So having that HDMI port makes it super, super easy to connect to any type of display you want. This Mac mini also retains the ethernet port on the back and also gives you the option to add a 10 gigabit ethernet port. You'll also notice that it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but unfortunately the 2018 Mac mini does not have an SD card slot on the back of the device. So the Mac mini is a BYODKM and that means bring your own display, keyboard and mouse. So unlike the iMacs, you don't get a fancy retina 5 5K display built into the Mac mini, but that does mean you can use any monitor you have laying around or pick the monitor you want to use for the computer. For this review, I'm using the LG Ultrafine 4K display through the USB-C port on the back. For the other accessories, I figured I'd go cheaper and use non-Apple products to kind of get a little more experience on how people are probably going to use the Mac mini. For the keyboard, I chose a really inexpensive Anchor keyboard that tries to simulate the Magic Keyboard for around $20. It's an ultra slim, low profile keyboard that's about the same exact size as the Magic Keyboard, and it even has a built-in rechargeable battery, and for only $20, it's actually a pretty cool keyboard. I'll put the link in the description. And I'm also using an old Razer gaming mouse I had lying around because it has a USB-A port on the back, so why not? Now you'll notice in that BYODKM, I didn't mention speakers. And little known fact, I noticed a couple of reviewers actually got this wrong. The Mac Mini has a built-in speaker inside of it. Now it is a small speaker, and although I didn't think it sounded too bad based on my usage for it. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a great speaker. It's certainly too low for what I would like to use it for, but I think most people might be able to actually get by with that little speaker inside of it. But again, you can add your own speakers through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or use the speakers inside of your monitor. Now what the Mac mini doesn't come with is a built-in microphone and I kind of found this particularly odd. Not that it's the biggest deal to go ahead and buy your own microphone. There's plenty of cheap USB microphones you can attach to the Mac mini or you could get a Logitech webcam with a built-in microphone. But there are specific features in Mac OS, like the Siri functionality, which come pre-installed on the Mac mini dock. And I just thought it made a poor user experience when you go and click on Siri and it says there's no microphone available to use. So I would have liked to seen a little microphone add it to the Mac mini. Okay, so now while this is mostly the same device on the outside, let's focus more on what's inside of the Mac mini. For this review, I'm running the Core i5 version of the processor. That's a three gigahertz processor with six cores. I'm also using 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. And that is the mid-tier model and that'll set you back $1,099. Now at the beginning of this video, 
I mentioned that when the 2014 Mac Mini was revised, they got rid of the ability to replace the RAM, but on the 2018 Mac Mini, you do have the ability to replace RAM. Now this process is a little tedious and a little bit complex for most users, and I'll leave it to the gurus at iFixit to teach you how to replace your RAM, but you can replace the RAM on the Mac Mini yourself if you want to and have the ability to. Now unlike the RAM, the storage is soldered onto the board, so I recommend picking up as much storage as you think you need or as much storage as you can afford. For me, I got the 256 gigabyte option, which honestly is a little bit low for me, but the fact that it has all those ports on the back, so having the ability to just plug in a one terabyte solid state drive into the back of the Mac mini is a nice big plus for me. And especially because it's a desktop and because it's not a laptop that I'm moving around a lot, having a permanent hard drive plugged into the back of the device really isn't a deal breaker. But let's get back more to the processor because that's really where the Mac mini starts to take off. And the processor on this Mac mini makes it one of the fastest Macs out there when you're talking about CPU performance. I mean, just look at the Geekbench scores here. You're getting over 5,000 on the single core score and over 20,000 on the multi-core score. Now, even my 2017 iMac, which I got last year, does not get into 20,000 on the multi-core score, it's closer to 14,000, and the Mac Mini's beating that on single and multi-core performance. Now all these Geekbench numbers sound nice on paper, but how well does it perform in real world situations? Now all your basic tasks run great on the Mac Mini, so browsing the web, watching a video, loading up music, editing something in GarageBand, using any sort of Word documentation, and it's great for editing PDFs like from our sponsor, PDF Element from Wondershare. PDF Element is an all in one smart PDF editor, which offers the easiest way to edit PDF documents from text to images, links, pages, watermarks, backgrounds, headers, footers, you name it. It's a great tool to maximize your document productivity. PDF Element is really such a great way to edit and manage your PDFs. I love the watermark feature, having the ability to just quickly store your signatures or edit any part of the PDF. The interface is also super nice and looks great on whatever display you're using it on, just like the Mac Mini. And it really is just a great piece of software to edit PDFs and make sure you check out all of the links in the description because PDF element is now up to 75% off just in time for the holidays and thanks again to our friends at PDF element for sponsoring this video as an entry-level computer of course it's going to be great for just about anyone probably even on that lower end CPU the Mac mini should be able to perform just fine but how well does it perform on other tasks like video editing photo editing and even gaming so for my needs editing in Final Final Cut Pro 10, the Mac Mini performed pretty well. Anything that handled a lot of CPU intensive tasks just did really, really well on that Core i5 processor. And Final Cut Pro 10 is pretty optimized for CPU as opposed to GPU performance, but we'll get more to that later. But again, for my videos, the Mac Mini was more than capable enough of handling them. And in some instances, again, it was faster than the current 5K iMac that I'm using to edit my videos on. Loading up my photo editing app of choice, Affinity Photo, everything seemed relatively fine. I was able to edit photos with relative ease. Any CPU intensive tasks that Affinity Photo had to do just seemed really, really smooth. And anything to do with loading on the internal storage on the Mac mini was just super fast because it's controlled by that custom T2 chip. And based on the stat tracking apps that I was using, I still had a lot of CPU headroom to use. While editing, the computer got around 80 degrees Celsius, so nothing extraordinarily hot coming out of the Mac mini too. And the fans were relatively quiet throughout all of my use of it. Now, while CPU performance was great, there was a problem that I had with the Mac Mini. And that was the underpowered graphics card that Apple put in this machine. And that's an Intel UHD Graphics 630. And for a desktop operating system, not having a dedicated graphics card is a pretty big negative in my book. And you're probably asking, Greg, what real world usage did you use that made this graphics card seem really bad? And that's whenever I had to do something graphically intensive in any of my applications. So for example, in Final Cut Pro 10, I mentioned that everything was running pretty smoothly. Now that was with the low quality image preview in Final Cut Pro 10. Final Cut Pro 10 gives you the option to have a lower preview image when you're editing your video. And that can speed up performance quite a bit if you have a lower end graphics card. And when I turn that option on to give me a high quality preview while also putting in video effects into the video, when I played back the video, 
the timeline bar would lag constantly. But for someone like me, it almost makes videos impossible to edit if I'm using the high quality preview mode and I'm loading a bunch of special effects into the video. Now for you Mac gaming fans out there, you're probably asking yourself how well does the integrated graphics card handle gaming? And it really depends on the game. So if you watch previous videos of mine, you know I talk a lot about game optimization for the Mac. And of course you have all different titles and some titles will utilize CPU you usage more some titles will utilize heavy graphics card so again a game like starcraft 2 which is pretty well optimized for the mac ran okay on the integrated graphics card now we're not talking about playing the game on high settings you will have to set this game to low to medium settings but you can play it at low to medium at 1080p and on low settings at 1080p you'll get above 60 frames per second as well but take a less optimized game and maybe a more graphic intensive game like shadow of mordor and the frame rate was so abysmal that it's basically on playable on the Mac Mini. So if you're looking to play a lot of games on your Mac Mini, I would probably stay away from it. I also ran into a few bugs, which I think might have been related to the graphics card. Like I mentioned in this video, I was driving a 4K display with it, and on the login screen, I would get the mouse cursor kind of duplicating and just reappearing everywhere. So I think this had to be an issue with the video card, but once I logged into the Mac, I never saw this problem again. But if you really, really want a better GPU on the Mac Mini, not all hope is lost. You do have those Thunderbolt 3 ports. So if you want to get an external GPU, if you want to increase the graphics performance on the Mac Mini, you do have that option. Now, when I went into this review, I was almost certain based on the raw performance of the CPU that this Mac mini was going to be a hit for every desktop Mac fan. And when I started this review, I thought I would ultimately be instantly ruling out the iMac behind me. But as I used the Mac mini, I found out that having a dedicated graphics card, having the built-in 5K display are still nice features that even having the fast, fast CPU in the Mac mini isn't going to completely make up for. And even things like upgrading the RAM in the 27 inch iMac is a lot easier than upgrading the RAM in the Mac mini. With that being said, if you don't need the best graphics performance, I do think the Mac mini is a really solid Mac. And some people won't benefit from having a dedicated graphics card. And if you don't need a dedicated graphics card, the processor performance in the Mac mini is a lot better than the 2017 iMac. With its high CPU performance, small size and great port selection, the Mac Mini is really an amazing computer, especially if you need a smaller sized Mac, or if you're using it for any of the other tasks that people love to use Mac Minis for, like running live streams, music production, or even using it for a home media server. And if you don't need a dedicated graphics card, the Mac Mini is versatile and mighty. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you subscribe. Also, let me know what you think of the Mac Mini in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out the links in the description to our sponsor PDF Element and for all the items we talked about in this video. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care everyone.